Ric Flair's last match. Sunday, July 31st at the Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Leading up to the event, we showcase Ric Flair's journey back to the ring in the exclusive docuseries, Ric Flair, The Last Match. As we unveil the star-studded matches that make up the card this Monday at 6.05 Eastern, we reveal the main event, Ric Flair's last match. Who will be standing across the ring from the Nature Boy? The world finds out this Monday at 6.05 Eastern. Ric Flair's Last Match com. Mike, did you watch any of this G1? I saw the first night's block matches as well as Filthy Tom's debut in New Japan proper. And I also saw Shingo Takagi take on Juice Robinson from night two. I haven't seen the other three matches from night two, the block play matches So we matches watched the exact yet, same matches. Is that true? Yeah. Well, well was, we saw some pretty damn good there matches. There was one then, exception. I, I did not watch the... Uh... I didn't watch Jay White and Sonata because I had limited time and I got uh, mixed reviews of that match. I'm surprised you got mixed reviews. Yeah. It was a it was a very good match. Was it better than Okada and Cobb or Osprey and Phantasmo? I don't believe that it was, but it just was another notch on what was a really good first night of that tournament. Realize I know that I have uh, I have heat with old Juice Robinson for working us over here on this program, but let's be honest. What the hell happened at the end of that match? Well. What went wrong? <laughs> the match was really good. It was. Until literally the last, like, 30 seconds. And then it just, like, went off the rails. It did not go off the rails as bad as uh, some other matches I've seen this week, like that uh, Natty Liv Morgan match or the oh. Lash Legend match or, <laughs> well. or the main event of Rampage. But uh, they all of a sudden just like they just just fell apart, and then the crowd got quiet trying to figure out what was going on, and then Juice just hits his move totally out of nowhere, and the ref like tells him to cover, and then he covered and it was over. It was totally anticlimactic, and he looked tired. <laughs> he looked exhausted when that match was over. What did Kevin Kelly say? It was about, what, 400 days, 368 days, whatever it was, since Juice Robinson had wrestled inside of a New Japan ring, and maybe some fatigue at play there. Maybe carrying his big ego has tired him out a little bit. He needs to drop some of that uh, nonsense that he's been doing, drop the fake U.S. title, and get back in the gym, work out a little bit, and be ready for this rest of this G1 coming up. So uh, that match was good, although I would not say that it was great. The Okada-Jeff Cobb match was an excellent match, which Okada won with the Rainmaker after getting pounded on the entire match because he is in the giant block, which means that he has to face a bunch of giants and also Filthy Tom. Can he survive? Well, we know he can beat at least one of them, but can he win the block? Will Ospreay and Phantasma was a freaking seth freaking Ugh. rollins great match the greatest finish ever as uh well let's uh will osprey goes for the <laughs> os cutter and phantasmo in midair catches him for a backslide will osprey kicks out at the very 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 last instant phantasmo immediately holds up three fingers to the ref and that brief moment of holding up three fingers will osprey just decapitates him with the uh uh, Hidden Blade and pins him. That match was awesome. Best match I saw of the first two nights. It was the best of El Fantasmo. Yeah, no I gimmicks know... except for one back rake. Yeah, and I know everybody likes that, and I know some people will say, well, you got to have the, the bastard Fantasmo to really appreciate this one. No, I like this one a lot, even if he's got more chicanery, which takes place regularly during his matches. I think we're past that. And I know we're not as a character. I know we're not because he's Bullet Club, but the potential is there where when you drop all that sort of stuff, same thing with Will Ospreay is he's kind of mellowed over time from doing as much flying and, and where he's at right now. He's matured greatly, and I think El Fantasmo has matured greatly as a wrestler in a very short period of time, and he could really be a player there as a foreign heavyweight coming up here in the future. You know, when you're doing uh, junior tag team matches, you may as well do a little bit of wacky, who cares? But man, you're in the G1, and there will be, there will be matches in the G1 where uh, he might be able to pull out a little bit of wacky. But night one, first match, no wacky. 
and it was awesome. And yes, Filthy Tom looked great. Beat uh, Kosei Fujita. And then the second night, it was him and uh, Royce Isaacs, or as we like to call him in Team Filthy, Hoyce Isaacs, against David Finley and Yoshihashi. Old, old Hoyce got beaten by David Finley. What can you do? But uh, Filthy's got a lot of charisma. I don't know if you've noticed or not. And I was like, he's a, also got a lot like of a proud denim. father. I taught him denim. everything he knows about denim. Did you teach him that? My I, God. I got a lot of denim, dude. Man, even the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Obari, is coming out and saying, "My God, denim. That's what that man is all about, and it fits him perfectly. A tough, resilient denim is the symbol of his fight style and of life itself." Filthy Tom Lawler takes Japan. This guy goes, Brian taught him to strip out of blue jeans? Yeah. What's so weird about that? Do you do a little dance when you do, when you do it like he does? Did you teach him I that? I mean, I'm not going to do it on the air, but... So anyway, the G1's going along just fine. Uh, standings. Everyone who won has two points. Those are the current standings. I tried to explain that last night, but Dave cut me off. <laughs> Told me we didn't need standings. Oh, no, man. Actually, we you're... do need standings. The standings are now, everybody who won has two points. Everybody who lost has no points. Those are the standings. Do you know how long Got it? this tournament is, Brian? Do you understand how long Bro, it this is? tournament is so long that Tom doesn't even have his first match for a week. Yeah, and you know what that means? There's going to be a lot of math Dave is going to be doing during shows with you. I can't he wait. Tries to figure out what can happen and what comes next. I can't wait to see your reaction. Can you actually put up a camera for that? I know it's out of the ordinary for Wrestling Observer radio shows, but could you please do that for all of us, please, to get your live reactions to Dave talking about this? Hey, listen, I realize it's lazy and all, but uh, Dave will watch the shows, and he will scribble on his yellow legal pad all the wins and losses, and and he'll do all this math. I just go to Wikipedia. It's all right there. (laughs) That's the easy way to do it. That's (laughs) <laughs> but can you trust Wikipedia? Well, not always, but uh, sometimes. Sometimes I can. <laughs> I mean, listen, I trust Wikipedia to add stuff up. I don't trust them to have facts straight all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. This is how the show begins, really. Oscar gives a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She hits a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.